is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are The road hasn't been kind to the Royals recently. KC has dropped their past four road games, and in their first two games in Anaheim, the starting pitching has been beaten up by the Halos' bats. Tonight, Chris Young, coming off a 10-strikeout game against the Orioles, looks to quiet those bats as the Angels and Royals wrap up their three-game set. It was a beautiful day in Southern California this afternoon and now we come to Anaheim where the world champion Kansas City Royals are in town for the final game of this three game series against the Angels and Royals baseball is presented all season long by Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff low price every day. Hi, everybody. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you. The Royals offense is still struggling a bit to open 2016. They're only averaging 3.8 runs per game. But one constant has been our Honda most trusted player, and that is Mike Moustakis, and he has been flat good from the beginning. It's been fun to watch this young man go off, and I'm telling you what, he's lifting off and over the wall. This guy's on a nice tear right now, Fizz. Look at him. He's got one home run every 10 at-bats. He's seeing the ball, and I like where he's hitting his homers. He's going to straightaway center field. Tells me he's right on it. He's not pulling them, and he's using the opposite field. He's really been excelling in that department, but I'll tell you what, the homers are needed. So let's turn our attention to starting pitching. Chris Young struggled early, and his key is deception. Well, he got it back. Ten strikeouts in only six innings in beating Baltimore last Friday. Yeah, and hopefully he'll be able to do the same thing. Just repeat those mechanics. Keep it out of the middle. That slider is his big pitch there. It helps him get that, that sneaky invisible over and past these hitters. So if he can stay out of the middle, I like his chances. They need him big time. It's a big start for him after this little struggle at the start of this road trip. I've got to have him missing those bats. He's had two good starts at the Kauffman Stadium this year, but on the road, his ERA is over 10. But again, those two starts in the road, his deception was not there. He was showing that pitch a little yeah, bit early. He doesn't have the overpowering fastball, so he's going to have to hit his spots a lot like Jared Weaver last night. Their guy, he, you know, 88 mile an hour fastball is what Chris Young's going to throw, but he knows where to locate it. Hopefully, we see it. We're at the Big A tonight. The Royals trying to salvage the final game of this three-game series. So stay with us. It's the world champs taking on the Angels here in Anaheim. And it comes your way next.
world series trying to take the whole the thing whole we too hot right now to have a cold game pictures on the map going 90 miles an hour i see the clouds moving it looks like scary showers yeah. must stay focused i'm trying to knock it out the bar the feel lights came on because it's getting dark. dark i feel my heartbeat adrenaline pumping the crowd jumping out the seats because see me coming see me the Royals' defense is one of the best in baseball. They're tied for the second fewest errors in the major leagues with only seven. They lead the AL in fielding percentage at 990. And they are 12 and 8 starting today's play, just two and a half games back of the sizzling Chicago White Sox. Here at the Big A, Nick Tropiano will begin his warm up tosses, the 6 4 right hander out of West Islip, New York. And uh, the lineup that he'll pitch to will be led off by. Alcides Escobar, then Mike Moustakas, who belted his seventh home run last night. Eric Hosmer, of course, with that 16 game hit streak. So Lorenzo Cain will get the night off. That means two days in a row with tomorrow's day off in Seattle. So Haas moves to three and Morales to four. It's a, it's a mental break, and that's good. Double up with a couple days off. Let's we'll see if the rest of those guys that all moved up one slot can get hot. Nick Tropiano is the pitcher. And he was Houston's fifth round pick in 2011 out of Stony Brook University and traded to the Angels in the Hank Conger deal, which also included tonight's starting catcher Carlos Perez. Yeah, well, you know what? We'll see what the Royals offense can do to Tropiano. This young man here, he's got a fastball, 90 to 93 miles an hour. He's got two seam sinkers, so he's going to sink the ball, and he also has a slurvy breaking ball. Now, his changeup is his go to pitch. He's going to throw that changeup any particular time. One of the reasons why he's hard to get elevated. He hasn't given up a home run this year yet, and he attacks down, down, down in the zone. He will elevate a four seam fastball with two strikes, but his slider and his slurvy breaking ball, he's going to use that to righties and hope that they chase it. So he didn't like to throw that for a strike. You talked about his changeup. I remember he was rated the best changeup in the entire Houston Astros system when he was with their organization. Now with the Angels and Escobar will lead things off batting 221. Fouled off strike one. You just find those holes. Guys that, that throw those uh, those warm burners. You, you just want to be able to make some good contact like the Royals like to do and just find the holes. Well, much like the team, Escobar searching for offensive consistency. The team has scored only more than four runs four times in the first 20 games this year. 63 degrees, comfortable. But that marine layer will come in and two fly ball pitchers. Kind of keeps the home runs from flying out of here at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And then he gets Escobar to reach for an off speed pitch away from him for strike three. Yeah. Got it. We're going to have to show some discipline on those sliders. He's, he's going to throw those to chase. The Angels defensively, very strong up the middle, particularly when you talk about Mike Trout and uh, Simmons, the center fielder in the shortstop. But Carlos Perez is an underrated defensive catcher. Yeah, you know what? He's over 30% throwing runners out. That's really good, Mark. The left fielder Ortega's got three outfield assists. So he can throw, and so can Trout and Cal Calhoun. Here is Mike with seven home runs, 11 RBIs this year. Tropiano, in his young big league career, has better numbers in the major leagues than he did in the minor leagues. His career in the minors was a three and a half ERA and in, in the big leagues and three starts this year a one six nine earned run average. There's that good changeup. Well they, they had a pitcher Haney that, that went on the disabled list. This young man got the call up to fill his spot and he's doing exactly what he wants to do. It's going to be tough with that good changeup down low and his slider for the Royals to show some discipline. And he threw it on a 2 0 count, which is a fastball count. And now he comes back with that fastball after the 82 mile an hour changeup, and it's fouled off by Mike. Well, he's been an extra base machine. 12 of his 20 hits are extra base hits this year. And it's smacked to left field for a base hit.
just as natural as can be. Hard to believe that Moose in 2012 and 13 couldn't find this stroke. You know, I mean, two solid years, and then finally he woke up and he said, you know what, I can do this. So he worked on it. He worked on it, worked on the offseason. And now he's a polished hitter all over the ballpark. Now he hopes that Eric Hosmer can drive him in. The Royals took the early 1-0 lead yesterday on Mustaka's home run. Get out and of here. here is Hosmer with a deep blast. Way out of here. Opposite field into the rock pile. Oh, man. Well, he said he hadn't given up a home run yet this year. That took care of that. First pitch. Wow. Trout, the center fielder, he just turned and watched it sail over his head. And way to keep that streak alive, that hitting streak with a first inning big fly. Now that's a career high 17 game hit streak for Eric. And, and it's kind of interesting, Hud. We say maybe that's the beginning of Haas getting hot. And you say, wait a second, he's got a 17-game hit streak. He really is not tearing the cover off the ball. He's basically been getting one hit per game. Boy, he tore the cover off the ball on that swing. 22 hits in his last 64 at bats during this streak. Here is Morales, the cleanup hitter. Pulled foul. Super slow motion. Look with this pitch down. Trupiano did it. He throws down in the zone, and these guys all know that, that he's a guy who doesn't rarely misses upstairs, so Hosmer had his sights at the knees and below. And Hud, when Hosmer hits home runs, I mean, they're all usually no doubters, like the one to center field early this year, and then this blast here the other night to give the Royals the lead in that uh, weekend series at the K. He gets those long arms extended. And he barrels it. it that ball is tattered. Good off speed pitch and a strikeout for Tropiano. Oh, man. That's what you want a, a big league hitter. In the three and four hole, teach those guys to lift that ball. A lot of guys just roll over and hit a ground ball, but Hosmer, he has the idea on how to lift that. You stay down. The bottom hand goes down and leads that top hand. Extension. They always thought he had that ability to play that three spot in the Royals batting order, but because of the success of Lorenzo Kane, they were able to have Eric clean things up. And Eric says he's in a perfect spot hitting fourth with Kane in front of him and Morales behind him, but he's back in that three hole, something that he was in in 2012 and 13. Salvador Perez to center field it will be caught by Mike Trout, but a two-run home run by Osmer, and the Royals have the early lead over the Angels. There you go, Chris Young.
Hosmer after Haas gave the Royals a 2 nothing lead. Now let's take a look at the Angels batting order. They're 10 and 11 this year and Escobar had a career high four hits last night. Ortega has been a real pest. And then you got the muscle Trout Pujols Calhoun. Chris Young will start for the fifth time for Kansas City coming off his best start of the year beating Baltimore four to two. We talked about that only one walk 10 strikeouts. Yeah now we hope that happens. He's walked eight on the season. He wants to stay away from those. Just just make them put the ball in play with that fastball. He uses the fastball up above the belt and it's got to be just located perfectly because he he's not overpowering but the slider is his main pitch. Escobar goes after the first pitch and fouls it off. And I talked with Chris the other day as impressive as he was in that game the victory over Baltimore. HUD I was more impressed with what he said after the game. I mean it was all about team. All I'm here to do is win. I don't care about strikeouts. I just want to win. And he talked about his teammates. He talked about his relationship with his manager and the respect he has for Ned Yost and what he has done for him sticking with him through the tough times. He's a fine world champion. Believe it. He's a veteran. He understands his role. It's a small role but pitching is starting pitching is 90 percent of the game. He said he's just one of 25. Fastball fouled off. Well both Escobars that are leading off for their teams are extremely aggressive. We've never seen a pitch they didn't like. <laughs> they are just hacking. Maybe if you put one in the dirt here it might work. He did but he didn't swing and now the count is even two balls two strikes. Too far in the dirt there. You coming over from the Washington Nationals had his best season offensively with a career high 314 average. Foul ball struck off of Salvador Perez. Yeah, I oh, got him on the forearm, maybe. His right hand, his strong hand. Yeah, hit him on the forearm. Let's see the slider. This drops straight down. It's a, it's a slider that's not flat. It's not hittable unless it's up. It really needs that pitch to make this fastball look good. The Royals really want to keep the one two guys off base before they face the muscle of the Angels. Yeah. A delayed call by Tim Timmons the home plate umpire but it was right there just above the belt and Escobar is a strikeout victim looking. Oh yeah there it is the invisible looks like it's not a strike but it is and Escobar you got to go. Didn't want to but you got to. Now Chris will face a guy he's never faced before Rafael Ortega who was recalled from the minor leagues on April 16th. He's starting because of the injury to outfielder Daniel Nava He's not ready to come back yet. And Ortega started in center field in game one of this series and then in left field last night. Just off the plate, they appealed, but he did not go. Ortega, he's a slapper. He kind of uses the whole field, sprays the ball around. He's got good speed. Knocks that one out of play. Now a 2 2 count, and our forward defense for the Royals. We told you they made the fewest errors in the American League with only seven. Well, Paulo Orlando is out there, Fizz. We'll talk about the defense now, and then we'll talk about the infield, how fast it plays. But Paulo Orlando, in the seventh start, you know, the team hasn't lost a game that he started. Paulo could be their, their good luck guy. 
Rex, you were talking about the fast infield. Can you tell me how it's different than Kauffman Stadium? Yeah, the, the, the infield grass is cut a lot lower, and it's almost like an artificial turf. So there's not a lot of grab on the ball when it hits there first or second time. What do we got going here? Oh, my. Sally. Uh-oh. Maybe it's Chris Young. Let's now, find out what's going on with Joel. Yeah, guys, I got it. They didn't. They thought on the appeal there to third base that he had gone around the dugout was furious with that, and I guess loud enough that uh, Tim Timmons heard it. It's pretty quiet here, this uh, Southern California crowd, and so Timmons heard every word from the dugout, and and he was telling them to cut it out and started to escalate a little bit, and I think Salvi just trying to jump in the middle and make sure nobody was tossed. And then a line drive struck to right field, but Orlando is there to record the out, so they don't have to worry about that argument. We just saw Mike Moustakas, Joel, in an argument with the crew chief, Mike Everett, because Moose had the same position to read that swing, and they were getting out after it. Joel, I'm glad you're down there next to the dugout. That's a great spot for you. You're down there where the action is, and you can pick up all that information for us. Way to go. <laughs> yeah, you know, I like it. I, I like what I'm seeing here. Royals, yeah. they're not happy getting beat the first two games on this road trip. Yeah, the Angels won 6-1 to one on Monday and 9-4 to four last night. And now Trout will send that out of play. And this was an offense that was really struggling. They were hitting 177, averaging 2.3 runs per game the previous six games, but have scored 15 runs on 22 hits in the first two games of this series. Good pitch by Chris Young. Trout has faced him six times only as one hit but that one hit was a home run. Chris had a difficult time finishing guys off when he got ahead in the count when he was going through his difficult time but with a one two count he gets Trout to pop up in shallow center it is Omar Infante and Young with a solid one two three first inning. For that long, but he has a history of keeping that ball down. Unfortunately, this one was down middle of the plate, and Eric Hosmer belted it about 430 feet to left center field. Well, Hosmer knew first, and Trupiano knew second that he hit it out. He is a guy who rarely gives up that 
long home run and he starts off Alex Gordon with the changeup for strike one. He'll get into a routine and a rhythm of throwing that changeup until he starts sitting on it. Then he'll go back to the fastball and then go back to the changeup again. He's, he's a guy that likes to toy with the hitters. And in our academy leaderboard, Tropiano, for guys who have made at least 14 career starts, he has the fewest home runs allowed per nine innings and 0.24, but Hosmer busted him in the first. In his last start, uh, he gave up both runs in the first inning on 26 pitches. That was in a no decision in a 5 to 2 loss to Seattle last Friday. Get him early. Inside. I will say this though, he's been living life on the razor's edge. I look down, 23 base runners he's allowed in 16 innings this year, but only three have scored coming into the game. And there is a perfectly thrown off speed pitch in the outside corner. And Gordon is a strikeout victim number three. Yeah. Gordon last night struck out three times. And that's the 27th strikeout of the year for him. I'd like to see him expand his zone a little bit with two strikes. He's taken too many borderline pitches with two strikes. He can get out of that by being more aggressive. Now Omar Infante two for six in the series. Both hits are doubles. Again fastball velocity 90 to 93. He likes to sink it. And he goes to change up. And the change up is really effective when a, when a pitcher has the same arm speed as the fastball. And that's exactly what Trupiano is blessed with. That's a field pitch, but it's, it deceives the hitter when he uses the same arm speed as the fastball. He has a 3 0 count to Infante, who walked twice last night. And remember, this is a guy, a very aggressive swinger. He only had nine walks last year in 455 plate appearances. <laughs> a strike. Darn it. He's hoping to get his fourth walk of the year. Perfectly located last two pitches. Yep, he's down in the zone with everything. Uh, at times he will elevate with two strikes. And it's smacked and backhanded nicely by Escobar. And the ball skips by Pujols. So Omar, let's see if they'll give him a base hit. Yeah, it's a knock. I, I just wasn't sure because the ball skipped in the dirt. Well, fine Albert, play by Escobar. And Albert is is really good at digging the ball out at first base. So Escobar, this year, he's been throwing from the sidearm. See, see the sidearm throw like that. Whenever you throw sidearm like that, you're going to sink the ball. And talking with Alfredo Griffin, their infield instructor, they'd like to get him on top, but you know, this guy's a veteran player and he's done it that that way his whole career. But but is it because he's a former shortstop. Uh, I'm just not so sure he should know better on that side of the field. It's a long throw. You got to stay on top of the ball if you can. So the Royals have a little life here in inning number two. And Fonte reaching on the infield hit. Now the official scorekeeper just said hit over error. And now Paulo Orlando. Escobar has four errors this year. and All of them are on throws like that. You talking about Alcides? No, or you know. You know. And that almost was his fifth. Hud, with a guy like this, a right handed batter, are you trying to take him to right field? Do you have to think that way? No, you just kind of want to see a few pitches. Paulo hadn't played in a few days, and he, he wants to see a few. Now, if anything, a guy like him who's down, 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 you might want to move up towards the pitcher in the box and just maybe a, maybe a couple inches and get that ball before it hits the bottom, bottom of the strike zone. That is grounded in the hole. Simmons gets one, and that's all they'll get. Boy, he gets rid of that baseball awfully quick at short. 
Got great hands. Usually it's the first guy sure, second guy quick. But it was, look, look at that transfer, wow. Paulo running hard down that line. He wants to keep the inning alive. Now Gerard Dyson, and if you watched our pregame show, a great interview with Joe Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery with Dyson. I remember a couple of years ago, Dyson tried to climb the wall, injured his leg on the play, and the Royals really missed him. And Rusty Coons, our first base coach and outfield coach, said, We missed Dyson's energy, not being with the club when he was back home. Rehabilitating that injury, not having his energy in the clubhouse, on the bus. He said he's just a great teammate. Well, his his value to the team is works both ways. Clubhouse, that's important to have that kind of disposition. But what he's doing now out on the field is more important. And he's getting his hits. Yeah, nice he says this is his opportunity. Yeah to run with it. It's very tough label to shake. A fourth outfielder or a utility player. Once you once you've got a few years in that role in the big leagues, they can count on you in that role and it's hard to break it. Yeah you've been retired for 18 years and you're still a utility player. That's right. <laughs> once one always one. But Gerard He's trying to break that up here. Stay hot. Keep you in the lineup. Made two doubles yesterday. Drove in a couple of runs. Just off the plate with that 90 mile an hour fastball. Well, he's confident. You know, he's a confident individual. And really, if you're going to be a successful baseball player or in anything for that matter, you you've got to have confidence in yourself. And you, you have to realize that. Not every day is going to be easy. It, it takes handling failure. You have that positive side of you to bring you out of it. Orlando with oh. a delayed steal oh. rips off second base. <laughs> that was a beauty. Yeah, Rusty Coon sees the best. Watch it. One, two, three. Three crow hops, and then you take off. And what happens is that is what Rusty looks for is the catcher after he catches the ball to drop his head. And and you get it on the catcher, but also on the infield, as you see, Simmons was late getting to the bag. So and it, Rusty also watches after the pitch what what the middle infielders do. Are they looking down? Are they now it's time to drive him in here. If Dyson can get another one of those and slap that ball in a hole somewhere, it'd be great. Because Paulo with his speed should be able to score on any hit ball right at the center or left fielder or right field. Paulo's first and the team's 13th this year. Well Dyson will work the walk and now the Royals will face Tropiano for the second time through the order. And his numbers go down dramatically when teams see him and make adjustments during the game. As we see pitches per plate appearance, this is brought to you by Toyota, Yunel Escobar, Simmons, and the Royals Escobar see the fewest pitches per plate appearance. And two of those guys are leadoff hitters, and usually your leadoff guys are patient. Well, all three of those guys that are in this game swung at the first pitch. Eski looking for his seventh, maybe eighth RBIs. Takes outside ball one. Well, he got him to swing off the plate with the slider. Two back to back. So Escobar, he's wised up a little bit. He would like to get going. With runners in scoring position, he's hitting 176 so far. Good speed on with Orlando at second and Dyson at first. Trupiano's a little nervous for a possible double steal. And he should be because it's possible either one of those guys, even with two outs, Push the pedal to the metal. Gerard Dyson, the trail runner, keeps his eye on Paula. If he goes, Dyson's going to go. Oh, 
out of play. Check out this play here. Hey, look at that. Not bad. That's great. Yeah. A little celebration at the end. One ball, two strikes. Escobar is taking a deep breath, saying, That was the one. Now he's going to go back to that slider away or the changeup. Well, you were correct, sir. And he was just able to pull it foul, giving himself another opportunity. But with those two pitches, that slurvy breaking ball and the change up, his two out pitches, his opponents hit that fastball best, particularly a little below Major League average at 90-91. Punches it towards left, and it'd be Ortega to make the catch. The Royals threaten but do not score, and we head to the bottom of the second inning, 2 nothing KC. Just about a minute ago, home plate umpire Tim Timmons and Ned Yost with about a one minute discussion. All civil, couldn't hear what they were saying, don't really need to, but no arguments whatsoever. So any issues maybe that they were having seem to be okay at this moment. Joel Goldberg back here down by the Royals dugout. Let's talk a little bit about Chris Young, who was always so thoughtful and so real with his answers. And so, guys, in, in talking to him about the start of the year, he said, look, I had two bad starts. That's it. And one of them, he felt, wasn't even as bad as the other one. And he said, okay, so I went back out last time and I had a better start. But that doesn't guarantee me anything today. You don't just flip a switch, suddenly have one good start, everything is better. Keeping things in perspective, he said it's a long season. Also interesting that Chris Young talking to the home plate umpire in the first inning making sure everything was okay. Thank you very much Joel as Albert Pujols skies when to right Orlando will take care of it and Chris Young who is one of the quietest but most competitive individuals he went in to have a conversation with Tim Timmons. I still oh, I still think it has something to do with the check swing. Yeah. Oh absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're just kind of clearing things up. You know what I love though how Salvador Perez and Mike Moustakis immediately came to his defense. That's right. You mess with one of them you're messing with all of them. Mm -hmm. 
That's what I mean by pulling on the same end of the rope. And American leaguers found that out last year when they challenged the Royals early in April here in Anaheim again in Chicago and the Royals fought back and then they won the American League with the most wins went on to win their first World Series in 30 years. Here is Cole Calhoun. Calhoun's been a little bit quiet and the Royals would like to keep him there. 0 oh for his last 11 and only three hits in his last 28 at bats. Now he's he's a little bit big with the swing. He's got some power but he's over swinging. He's trying too hard. He's got plenty of pop but pitchers are pitching him away They're staying away from the pop. Walks Calhoun on four pitches. Our key in the driver's seat. It's all about. Well, it was taking on this Angels offense in this series, averaging seven and a half runs per game, batting 344. And we told you the previous six games, they're averaging just 2.3. And batting only 177, but visiting with Mike Sosha before the ball game, he said, We are a better team than last year. And we were quiet for a long time. We knew they'd break out of it well. Unfortunately for the Royals, they broke out of it in game one of this series. Scored six runs and then scored nine runs last night. Chris Young does not induce very many ground balls because of that high fastball. Now he gets a few on a slider. But he's a fly ball pitcher, so he, he's but he's facing a guy here that is a lane ball candidate. He's gone into five this year. As a team, they grounded into 24. And it's because he's aggressive and he puts the ball in play. He's not a power guy; doesn't have a lot of pop, but he he's he puts the ball in play. And he's not one for, for walking. Three for nine in this series, a couple of hits in the opener. And that's why Young working him with that slider, trying to induce that ground ball. Young had 10 strikeouts in that last start. First 10 strikeout game since 2008, and the sixth in his career. There's a, yeah, there's a look at his pitches. And usually the fastball is the pitch that's thrown most often. In his case, it's the slider. Simmons spent four years with Atlanta, acquired in the deal that sent Eric Ibar, long term shortstop with the Angels. To Atlanta. That ball struck to right field, and Orlando is there, and he'll make the catch for out number two. So a pop up, a walk, and a pop up. That's good to see. Chris Young's on. He gets a lot of those. Sure helped when he towed the slab with a 2 0 lead, courtesy of Eric Cosmos. Third home run. Now Young to face the lefty Cliff Pennington. Dyson is there in left center field to make the catch. So another comfortable second inning for Chris Young. And when we come back it will be Mike Moustakis to lead things off.
nothing on a moose single and a Hosmer home run and our sprint trivia question tonight. Well, we flash a picture of Mike Trout. Well, besides Trout, who is the only other player in history to win the Silver Slugger Award in his first four seasons? Mm. Well, I've got a guess. Well, throw it out there. See if it's He might be on the field with him. Mike sends one back to Tropiano, who will underhand and record the first out. I'm guessing it's the guy who just made the catch. I mean, there are just three players in Major League history have started their career with 25 plus home runs and 100 plus runs scored in each of their first four Major League seasons. That's a good guess. Those guys are DiMaggio, Trout, and Pujols. So I'm just guessing Pujols. That's a good guess, but I think you're wrong. I'm just throwing it out there. I know, it was a guess. Okay. Yeah, look. You turned around and looked at Holtzy, didn't you? My, well, <laughs> Dave Holtzman, who is our associate producer and does a great oh. job with our stats. Did he do it and again? Here is Eric Hosmer going deep left center field, and that ball's up against the wall. And Hosmer will have two this time. Pitches, two extra base hits. From Eric Hosmer, he's not messing around. And, and almost the exact same spot he hit the homer. Didn't quite barrel it like the first swing. But there it is. Look at the straight leg, that good balance, the hand position, head position. All of it's looking good. Stay hot, young man. Put it right between them. So the Royals have had base runners in all three innings and they've had men in scoring position now for the second straight inning. Our Kubota power stats show you how good the Royals are on the first pitch of an at bat plate appearance. Look at that. 403rd highest in Major League Baseball. Jump on it. Percentages of getting a fastball are much greater than the secondary pitches. And now it is Morales with a shot to left center. But Mike Trout with a fine catch up against the wall, and Hosmer cannot advance. Great jump on that ball by Mike Trout. Morales, if he gets under that a little bit more, might have had him on his third homer. But on contact, Trout is moving right to it, straight line. was robbed a couple of times yesterday. Second baseman Johnny Giabatella started a nifty 4-6-3 double play on a smash by Morales. And in game one, Cliff Pennington made a terrific play to take a base hit away from Kendris on a play up the middle. Kendris three times in this series has been robbed. So Salvi will try and come through with Eric at second base. Royals very aggressive on the bases with two out. And Salvi, a little like Moose, gets a lot of extra base hits. 11 of his 18 hits this year have been extra base hits. Hitting just 2-11 with a runner in scoring position. Wants to change that. Tries to dump it to left field. Simmons goes out and he'll get there.
Royals baseball is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit us at your MidwestFordDealers.com. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery with you. Bottom of the third inning at the Big A in Anaheim. The Royals lead 2 0 on a two run home run by Eric Hosmer. Chris Young has just paced one over the minimum. That was a walk to Cole Calhoun, but he left him stranded by getting a couple of flyouts from Simmons and Pennington. And now we'll open against Carlos Perez, Jin Man Choi, and Yunel Escobar, hitters 8, 9, and 1. Strike one. Well, a high fastball, then a high slider, and Perez finds himself down in the count 0 2. He had a couple of RBIs yesterday. We saw his batting average only 170. Are you kidding me? Ooh. Bow tie. Yeah, you know that hit he got last night to off of Volquez to finish him off is really a marvelous hit. I mean, he just shortened up, just wanted to put the ball in play, and it was a timely hit for Perez. And then a beautiful slider that bent down out of that strike zone, and that is strikeout number two for Chris. And that's one of the reasons why you you elevate pitches inside the hitters sets up that slider away. He's going to back him off the plate here. This is the strikeout, but watch, watch the uh, chin music here. And HUD, you mentioned bow tie, and wasn't it, wasn't that the cliche they gave Nolan Ryan that Ryan, I guess, used the term bow tie when yeah. he'd come up and in, and he boy, he was a hard thrower here with these Angels back in the 70s. He had 102 miles an hour one time. I've heard of him. Fastball just does catch the inside corner. Yeah, Denny Matthews was telling me that the Royals would come here that face Ryan Tanana, Clyde Wright, and Andy Messerschmidt, and then would go up to Oakland, face Catfish Hunter, Vita Blue, Blue Moon Odom, Raleigh Fingers, and you'd go. We'd, we'd score like three runs in a six game road trip. Jiman Choi, he is from Korea, but spent six years in the minor leagues with the Seattle Mariners, a career average of 302. Designated hitter today, and Young goes upstairs trying to get him to chase. Now a 2 2 count. He picked up his first major league hit on Saturday against his old ball club Seattle. Wow, good pitch there. But how about this? This was the invisible you're talking about. Check this out. It, uh, he's on. He's on. He's giving up some fly balls and he's getting a few strikeouts. There it is. It's just above the belt. And coming out of that six foot ten frame, he kind of pushes underneath the ball. It stays underneath it. And hitters have told me that they have a hard time picking it up. Yeah, Alex Gordon said he's so tall it looks like the ball is coming down at you. Three strikeouts, no ground outs, five flyouts. And I believe Escobar went on that one. Strike one. Last night was his 16th career four hit game. Yep, two sliders in a row. He just deserved the third one for that swing there. <laughs> Give him another one. Does that come from personal experience? Absolutely. You swing, you, you, you get a hitter to start swinging out of the zone, man. You're going to keep throwing it there until he lays off of it. And then you'd go home, and what would your mom say? Well, I wasn't living with my mom. Well, it I was know. A phone I'm call for this. There you go. Yeah. And then nice. he goes upstairs. So what? What did she say, son? You'd be better off with a boat or up there swinging. <laughs> Some of that stuff you're swinging at. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Beautiful. Punched out the side. 
forever young. Back at Angel Stadium, Royals up 2 nothing, and, well, I don't have to put Fizz up there. <laughs> yeah, Fizz. Well, we got to show Ryan it's that. It's Fizz, yeah. You're welcome. How about a selfie now? Oh, I don't know. You might get yourself in a bit of trouble there, brother. <laughs> I might get a call from the house tonight. <laughs> and it won't be from your mom. <laughs> no. I think I'll stay up here, Fitz. <laughs> Veteran move. Here is Alex Gordon. Struck out looking his first time up. There's Rhino. He's going to stay up here. No selfie for Ryan as well. well now he, Boy, he is really working Alex well. Uh, uh, Stewart has probably got the call this inning. Mm -hmm. Rhino, he's got some time if he wants to go down there and no. get a selfie. Tried that change up in the dirt. Alex won for eight in this series. That one hit was a double. And all three of his doubles this year have come on the road. Kauffman Stadium is a ballpark that sees a lot of extra base hits. Pulled to the right side foul. Alex down the count. Let's see, 27 strikeouts, 10 looking this year. That's second most in the American League. Wow. Great off speed pitch, strikes out Gordon. And Royals fan join us May 3rd versus the Nationals for the first T shirt Tuesday of the 2016 season. Show up early as only the first 10,000 fans to the gate will receive this light blue World Champs t shirt. Come cheer on the Royals and continue the celebration of our 2015 World Series championship with a brand new t shirt. It's just go to Royals.com or call 806 Royals for tickets. And we're only in town for three with the Washington Nationals and their great player, Bryce Harper. Omar Infante reached on an infield hit his first time up. This is eerily looking a little like Tropiano's last start, where he gave up two runs in the first inning, and that was it. Well, he's failed to reach the sixth inning in all of his starts. So I think put a few more runs on the board, they'll keep that streak intact. 
in the air. Left center field Mike Trout calls off Ortega and makes the catch for route number two. Well, here's a guy innings one through four really good but then we talked about third time through the order teams have begun to get to him a six point nine eight ERA from after the fourth. And look at the opposing batting average with runners in scoring position. How does it just seeing that slurvy curveball and that changeup for the third time. Yeah and if it's not commanded correctly it gets hit. It's not overpowering. Starts out Orlando with the changeup. Pitchers that have that 95 plus they can get away with mistakes in the middle. He's not a bad starting pitcher and he was their sixth guy. And Orlando fouls that one back and I'm sure Houston would love to have him back because Houston's starting rotation after Dallas Keuchel and Colin McHugh ha has been rather average. And they traded away this guy Tropiano and also Velasquez who has been incredible for the Philadelphia Phillies early. His nickname was Nitro with the Astros or Nick Tropiano. I saw where Sean Manaya, former Royals, going to get his first major league start coming up for Oakland. Good for him. Yeah. He started the year in the minors and they pulled him up. Royals needed to get Ben Zobris last year and Johnny Cueto, Johnny Gomes, and they won a world championship. That's all that matters. You are exactly right. That will be beyond everyone's reach. Finally get into the seats for a souvenir. You know this is the kind of pitcher here if you can bunt it all have any skills and Paulo does he won't be doing it with two strikes here but those change ups and sliders those are easy to bunt. Guys that throw hard. But you know you might talk to some of the hitters saying you know why am I going to waste a, a bunt opportunity when I can hit him in a gap or take it deep. Paulo rocks it to right field and he is on with two out. Good approach there. Nice swing. Stay in, keeping the hands inside. And that's a ball a lot of guys are going to pull, but that's his approach. He went up there thinking that way. That ball's middle in. Well, Ger Gerard Dyson might think about bunting here, even though the third baseman Escobar is in. Yeah, but he's hot right now. He needs to keep swinging. When you're hot, swinging a good bat, you want to keep doing it. Walked his first time up. Tupiano wanted that one. You walk after three hit game, you know, you're you're locked in. It's quick. Yeah, he had Paulo Orlando rip a bag off him. Last time Paulo reached. He did the delay steal. He is pretty quick home too. Yeah I guarantee you the Angels they're, they're keeping an eye on him and, and when you're the shortstop or the second baseman whoever's covering after you get beat on a delayed steal you have to watch the runner right when he throws the ball. You gotta take some quick quick peeks over there. And there again is a two and oh change up. So you get the feeling that that's his money pitch if he's going to go to a changeup on two and O. Oh. Yeah, we talked about it. That's his go to pitch. Might just double up with it here.
but with that slide step if he makes a mistake and sometimes when you're not in that full wind up or that runner is dividing your attention you'll miss by inches and the guy at the plate will hurt you. Paulo Orlando at first base playing in his first game since April 17th and there is a 3 1 pitch fans vote for the Royals player of the month at one of the seven rally house locations in the Kansas City metro area all participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. Paulo had a very good month of April last year with all those triples early. Five in his first seven games, and that's the pitch he did not get the call on earlier in this plate appearance. Yeah, an umpire, you know, if there's this, you know, if the hitter sees that he called it a ball once, he's going to call it again, but not that time. So three and two, he might want to look for the changeup because he threw it two and zero. Oh, he'll throw it three and two. Who holds playing behind Orlando who will be going and there's a base hit to right field and Orlando will race to third. So Dyson does stay hot. He's been on twice. There you go. Good job. Yeah I mean, he waited. Change up. He knew it was coming. That's a good scouting report. Yeah, Dyson really felt like this is my time. That's why he was so jazzed about getting to spring training early this year and then of course he Hurts his side on the very first at bat in spring training and gone for the entire spring training and then rehab down in the minor leagues. The pitch was up there. See that change up there? He did him a favor by leaving it up in the zone. Dyson found a hole. Well, the Royals in the last few years have been a very good two out hitting team with runners in scoring position. They have not started that well this year. Dyson hitting safely in seven of his first nine games. Royals a first and third situation. Now a ball in the dirt that may get away from a guy like Carlos Perez could score Orlando and the Royals could take the three nothing lead. So you wonder if he'll have the confidence in throwing that change up in the dirt. He's got an Escobar swinging. And also popping out. Yunel Escobar, the third baseman, is back. Never know. Good oh, call, Hud. Man, that was it. That was the one. Slider away. Get that run home any way you can. Didn't, didn't reach out there and get it. Eski in an 0 for 15 slide, trying to break that right here. And now, Yunel Escobar comes in, even with the bag at third. And they got Gerard Dyson at first base. He's got quick feet and a quick move. They all knew that. Puts the ball right to pool holes, right where he wants it.
Montgomery, a single by Mustakis in the first ball by Eric Hosmer's third home run of the year, now has a 17 game hit streak, and the rest Chris Young. No hitters through three. Our Jeep drive of the game, Hosmer in the first. Oh, we're not wasting any time. Whenever a hitter bows up like that, he knows he got a homer, man. That was a beauty. That's that's Eric Hosmer's strength, opposite field. That's why that's why they, they pitch him. They try to get him inside, you know, they try to keep get him from keeping his arms extended. Like so many left handers, likes that ball down. And then he went ahead and swung at the first pitch his second time up and hit the same spot, but not enough to hit a homer, but got him a double. He'll be up in the top of the fifth inning. Right now it is Rafael Ortega who takes strike one from Chris Young who was really sharp in that third inning striking out the side and now has four strikeouts on the night. Just off the plate. He'll top out around 89 sometimes 90 miles an hour in that last fastball at 89. Moose is in and will stay in with a 2 1 count. Ortega's only chance on a bun is to pull it with him to Hosmer. And now Mike moved back a little bit at third, even with the bag. Now he'll creep in, and Ortega swings and lines a base hit to right field. So he stays hot. Now four hits in this series. He's lined out, a line single. So the Angels get their first hit comes to lead off the fourth inning and here comes the Thunder and Trout and Pujols. Trout popped up to the second baseman Infante to end the first. Ortega with one steal and two attempts this year. Yeah, they like to run off Chris Young. Ortega was thrown out by Salvador Perez on Monday. Trout gave him an opportunity to go, but Ortega did not, and it's strike one. I remember, you know, you, you got to think twice about stealing in front of Trout and pool holes coming up. You got to make sure you get a good jump. Good slider, strike two. There you go. You can see Salvi pointing. He wanted it to make sure it was down and away, and Trout reached for it. Fifth home run hit off a of young. It's, it's going to be a ball just where he likes to put it, but it was even a little higher. But man, what a short, compact swing. Look at that. Both hands on the bat, man. I'm going to tell you what, this guy's a powerful guy. If you hit one up, you hit one up there on that batter's eye, you hit it. And that was the way to get him out in the past. Go up on him with the fastball. Now Pujols, Escobar has it, and he'll throw him out. 
Mike went down and stayed down so Alcides would have a good view and uh, Moose wouldn't be in his way. Now that's I tell you you're going to have really good concentration if you're Eskimo the shortstop. If Moose just misses it but he kept his eye on it. Moose fell awkwardly and I'm not sure if he landed on his shoulder or not. He stayed down for a minute. I'm thinking oh Haas saying the same thing. But Moose got up and had a big smile to ask you. That's all in fun. Now Cole Calhoun who walked his first time up. Here's that again with Escobar helping the moose to his feet. <laughs> Well, he gave Eski the best view he could at first base to throw out Albert. That ball pretty well struck. Dyson racing over, and he'll make the catch for the second out. Hey, Shocker fans, don't miss out on Wichita State Day on May 28th when the Royals host the Chicago White Sox. The first 2,000 fans who bring their Wichita State theme ticket to the designated table will receive a limited edition gray, black, and gold branded KC cap courtesy of Fox Sports Kansas City and Rally House. Join your fellow Wichita State fans for an afternoon of Royals baseball. Purchase your theme ticket at royals.com slash theme tickets. Wichita State has always had a terrific baseball program and lately man, they have had a outstanding college basketball team. Here is Simmons strike one with the foul ball. Trout with two home runs in this series. Pujols with a couple of home runs in this series. Well, Chris comes back to retire the next three, but a single by Ortega, then the home run by Trout. We are back to square one. Eric Hosmer busted his third and that's why we are tied at two going to the fifth inning our Panera Bread look is about Jake Arietta as we take a look around the league two no hitters in his last 11 starts look at his last 24 ridiculous 20 and one record and a 0 0.86 ERA unfortunately he got rained out in the Cubs outing today in the Midwest well, I think that one losses to the Royals isn't it last year we get him. You always ask me questions that oh, I'm going, the, huh? You're, you're the professor. I can't remember. You're the professor. You know everything. 
I remember Escobar hit the first pitch of that series out at Wrigley Field last year and we heard like 10,000 Royals fans going crazy we're going are we back at mini K. It was fantastic. I mean everywhere we, were, we went last year we saw fans in blue and we're seeing it again this year on the road. Jake got a no decision. That is the answer. And thank you, Dave Holtzman, for looking that up. All right. Escobar chasing that breaking ball away from him, and Tropiano gets his fifth strikeout. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Moose singled his first time up. It was followed by a Hosmer home run. Angels pulling their guys over to that right side. They believe he's going to pull it on the ground. Even though the base hit by Mike went to left center field. It's last time up. Well, you know, he throws so many change ups, usually hitters are out ahead of him. Good take there. And there it is up in the middle. Now the, the shortstop was playing in his natural spot HUD. I think Simmons makes the play. But once again Mike Moustakis has become a very intelligent hitter and he is taking what the defense gives him. Yeah. He's, he sees it. Let's see if Hosmer now swings at the first pitch for the third straight time. He has seen two pitches. He's homered on the first he saw, and then the second pitch he saw, he doubled. Look at those numbers for that's, Moose. That's, I mean, you'd think the change. I let him just keep trying sure. to outsmart Moose. You can't do it. He's got to mix up this pitch here. He does and gets a swing and a miss on the off speed. Oz ain't messing around tonight. No. Boy, he is trying to keep those rows close. Picked off Gerard Dyson to end the fourth inning. Gone with the secondary pitches in the first two to Hosmer. Got a swing and miss in the first one and off the plate. Now a 1 1 count. Well, defense still believes he's going to pull. Slider, change up, change up. We showed you that graphic that last inning after the fifth inning his ERA is six point nine eight. Great hitters count for. Eric Hosmer but we told you Tropiano several times in this game on two oh counts has thrown the change up. I'll throw it again. How to play. He did go with the off speed.
Oz had that covered. That's the same spot he hit the homer in. Wondering if they would send Mike Mustakas, try and stay out of that double play and get the defense moving, and maybe Hosmer fire one through. If he gaps one, Moose would have a greater opportunity to score. There's a shot in the alley. Calhoun is able to cut it off. And he holds Moustakis from advancing from second to third. Stay hot. Haas, man. That's beautiful. He got him a pitch he could handle. He could see it. He recognized it. That ball is right in the middle. And when you're hot, you're not going to miss it. Good controlled swing there. With the three hits tonight, his batting average has risen from 312 to 338. Mark Trumbo was leading the American League in batting coming into the night at 373, the Baltimore outfielder, designated hitter. Now the Royals need a big hit from Kendris Morales, who is one for his last 11 with runners in scoring position. Last time with Hosmer at second base, scalded one, but Trout made a terrific catch in left center field. Strike one. Trupiano executing his pitches except for that one there all down in the zone. He knows Morales is grounded into five double plays. That's what he wants him to do here. He's want to stay inside that ball and think opposite field if you can. First pitch was a beauty. Let that one go. One one count. No matter if he could get one elevated. One swing to put three runs back up there. One ball, two strikes. When you have a good changeup like that, it makes that 91 mile an hour fastball look like it's 95. He got that one by him. Royals 0 for 3 tonight with runners in scoring position. They started the night hitting 224 in those situations. Oh man, he went soft on Kendris Morales, who could not hold up and swings and misses at a pitch in the dirt. Piano, well, he's 86 pitches. Might get a chance to come out for the six for the first time. Unless Salvi can get him to expend a few pitches, get him in trouble. Royals have got to start hitting with larger yeah. scoring position. They need to find an opponent that they can just blow out. It hasn't happened so far. I tell you their offense just searching for consistency. They've only scored more than four runs four times in the first 20 games this year. Salvi not bad with six RBIs. Get out of play. But now the advantage to Tropiano. Royals trying to salvage the final game of this series after 
losing on Monday six to one last night nine to four they have tomorrow off and then have a three game series with the Mariners Medlin and Felix Hernandez on Friday Ventura against Wade Miley on Saturday and Kennedy against Ty Walker on Sunday trying to win one of three here in Anaheim. Once again hit right at a fielder and that will do it the Royal Strand two. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning tied at two. Royals fielders back out there and the shift has become such a big part of baseball but the Royals and a good team like the Cubs don't use it a lot but Mike Gershley still moves around his infielders. We sort of have a shift and and Eskies like my rover in the middle where you know if the guy gets up in the count he'll slide over to the second base side otherwise he stays on the shortstop side and you know it's it's worked for us and seems like it continues to work so we'll continue to do that and so we will continue to keep an eye on Alcides Escobar in between at bats and when certain pitch counts are there but every team going about this differently and Mike Gershley telling me guys he spends a good three hours a day really looking through video and tendencies and counts and and trying to figure out where to position these guys and so they're not as drastic with the switch doesn't mean they don't ever do it but Maybe a bit less than some of the teams like the Astros out there. Thank you, Joel. And uh, Chris Young makes quick work of Cliff Pennington by striking him out. That's six strikeouts. And I want I, I wanted to ask you, Jersey also said that Escobar feels more comfortable on the left side of the diamond. How much does that play into it? Well, he's he's a gold glover and he has an understanding about the hitters. Where to play and what the pitchers do in that particular night. So you're gonna go. You're gonna ask Eski before you do any shifting without getting his opinion. Well, Young will take care of Carlos Perez. So very quickly, two outs in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Jure says that Escobar just has remarkable instincts. Where. He'll get ready to move him like two steps to his left, and he's already moving, reading the the bat swing, and uh, yeah. etc. And especially this time of game, where the hitters have now are going to Choi here. He's the second time through the order, so you know he knows how to play. Chris Young, that high fastball slider. Young struck him out last time and starts him with a fastball on the inside corner for strike one. Six years with Seattle, then with Baltimore, and 
He was selected off of that Baltimore roster in the Rule 5 draft in December. He made the team because of the injury to Daniel Nava. So right now Ortega and Choi battling for that backup spot when Nava comes back. Who goes down? Here's the pitch. A swing and a high fly ball deep to right field, but Orlando is there about 10 feet from the warning track. He'll make the catch and pull it down. So Young comes back with an excellent fifth inning. 2 2 ball game. Game at the Big A in Anaheim. The sixth is our Sonic Slam inning, and our contestant is Scott Kriegel from Leewood. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Scott will win $300, but if the Royals hit a Grand Slam, Scott will win $25,000 from Sonic and the Royals. Well, Nick Tropiano has really controlled Alex Gordon thus far. 0 for 2 is Alex with a strikeout looking. And a strikeout swinging. What adjustments would you like to see Gordo make right here? Well, I'd like to see him be aggressive, especially with two strikes. Ball one. He has started out Gordon inside, either with a changeup breaking ball and now a fastball. This one is the first that's missed. And that one's a low strike call. Fernando Salas warming up in the Angels bullpen. Big difference in the Angel bullpen arms and the Royal bullpen arms. The Angels do not have the power arms that Kansas City does. More of a finesse staff down there. Two straight fastballs now. Let's see if Alex gets a change up. Nope. Stay with the heater. Fine. Just low, three balls and two strikes. That's a good take there. That's a good pitch there. One swing out of the zone. He's walked ten times this year. And then he goes to left field. Ortega drifting back, still going back, but gets there a step from the warning track. Royals fans, bring home your piece of history. World Series replica fan rings, pendants, cufflinks, and more. Get crowned today by going online to royals.com slash fan rings to own a piece of this one-of-a-kind collection. And it is beautiful. We are proud to wear them. 
2015 world champions. What a great achievement. And I was talking with Mike Sosha about the similarities in his 2002 world championship team and the Kansas City Ball Club. And the one thing he said was how unselfish both teams are. His team won that world championship with the likes of Benji Molina and Scott Spezio and Adam Kennedy and Benji Gill and David Eckstein. Tim Salmon. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the guys who weren't stars. Well, I had to text Tim Salmon a picture of the ring. And he mm -hmm. texted me back tonight and he said he was really proud of us. Cool ring. He's watching the game tonight. And there were a lot of similarities because Mike Sosha built the 2002 team on pitching and defense. And Dayton Moore, Ned Yost, and the staff built the 2015 team on pitching and defense. With all homegrown talent to yeah. both teams. And of course, both teams had ridiculously good bullpens. Last couple of years, Greg Holland, Wade Davis, Luke Hochaver, on and on. And that year in 2002 was Troy Percival and Francisco Rodriguez. Well, he has never made it through the sixth inning yet his longest outing was five and two thirds innings at Minnesota back on the 17th. Brought to you by your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers. Visit us for great prices on the all new 2016 Malibu. By Panera Bread. Food as it should be with 24 Kansas City metro locations. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Here at the Big A, we have our Chevy call to the bullpen, and they're bringing on Fernando Salas. He worked a inning and a third scoreless on Monday night in the second outing of the homestand. He is not allowed to run in his last three games. And what does he throw? Well, he's done a nice job. He has given up a couple home runs. And that's what the Royals might be looking for here. He's a fly ball pitcher. He'll go 88 to 93 with his fastball slider changeup. Paul Orlando looking for his first home run of the year. Hit seven last season. Limited playing time. He's been on twice, reaching on a fielder's choice and stealing second base and singling to right field. Strike one. Salas now 30 years old out of Mexico. Three years with Saltillo of the Mexican League. And then he was with the Cardinals organization from 2008 to 2013, then traded with David Freeze. To the Angels. And there's a base hit to right field. So Orlando has been on three times. 
He's got that opposite field stroke down. Yeah, first pitch was slider away, and then as another off speed pitch looked like oh, out over the middle of the plate, didn't miss it. Perfect swing. Ball was hit too hard for Infante to get to third base. Calhoun has a good arm. Royals in search of a clutch hit 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Dyson on twice with a walk and a single. And he fouls one back and had a good swing at that offering from Fernando Salas. Yep, Dyson could be the guy. He's the best hitter so far this year with runners in scoring position. Hitting 400 coming into this game. We talked about the Angels' lack of stuff. Their bullpen averages the fewest strikeouts per nine innings in the American League. Salas barely misses low. It's okay though, Carlos Gomez, catcher. Or Carlos Press, excuse me, he liked it. He wants him to put that ball in there. Watch him. See how he holds his glove up here. He said, yes, yes, that's where we want it. Keep it right there. Even though it wasn't a strike, he didn't want Dyson hit the three run homer. Another good swing, but fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes. Four for ten with runners in scoring position. Those two doubles came yesterday in the second and fourth inning. Knocked in runs. Pulls it to the right side. They'll get one. They'll have no chance to get Dyson. So Simmons with the bluff to keep runners in the corners. And now. A guy who is desperate to get a base hit, Alcides Escobar, all for his last 16 and only five hits in his last 33 at bats. I think he's glad he doesn't have to face Tropiano, who chewed him up with that changeup and slurvy curveball. Well, he'll tell you he got himself out. Tropiano didn't get him out. He said he was. I mean, he's just a little bit too aggressive on his pitches. Be a big time for a hit for him for confidence and to give him the lead. Well, going by those numbers, doesn't look too promising. That means he's due. That's right. Royals started the night two and a half games back of the White Sox, but the White Sox won again. Beat Toronto, shut them out for nothing. Great start by Jose Quintana. Out of play, strike one. Salas takes a long time to get that ball home. Dyson can walk into second base. He doesn't possess the quick feet of Trupiano, the starter who picked him off earlier tonight. Dyson extends them lead a little more. And Salas throws over again. The inning started with Alex Gordon flying out to left field, Ortega taking it down near the warning track. And then after he walked Infante, Sosha lifted Tropiano, brought on Salas, who gave up a single. And then Dyson reached on the fielder's choice. Angel manager Mike Sosha, he likes to call pitch outs. I don't know if he will do it with Infante at third base. Two outs, but you never know.
Salas just holding that baseball for the longest time. And now Perez wants to go out and visit. Well, we told you the White Sox beat Toronto for nothing. And in the other American League Central games, Detroit blasted Oakland nine to four, and Cleveland edged Minnesota six to five. Well, that's game still in the top of the ninth inning. And they're playing in Minneapolis. Dyson does not go. One ball, one strike. Put that fastball out there for Perez. Make it easier for him. Dyson goes. Pitch taken. Throw by Perez. Not in time. It's a steal by Gerard and the Royals' second steal. Now, if Escobar can single, he could give the Royals a 4 to 2 lead. Third steal for Gerard. He's been caught one time. That was on a fastball. Carlos Perez has a, a very good throwing stroke. Good transfer, glove to hand. But like I said, Salas takes too long to get the ball home. Now, allows a single to do the job. Best way to break out is to hit a doinker. Pulls it to third. Escobar has it. Double clutches. Escobar is out. Got him. Summary Chris Young working the bottom of the sixth inning. Eric Hosmer belted a two run home run the first, but Mike Trout went deep for the fifth time this year. Let's check out in the first. Why not? First pitch. It worked for Hosmer. It didn't for Trupiano. That ball went up there in the rock pile, man. That's a bomb. And then Trout evened it up. Got a high pitch from Young and drove it out dead center up on the batter's eye. Well, Chris will have to face him here in inning number six as Trout will be batting third. It'll be Escobar, Ortega, and Trout. Just inside 2 and 0. Oh. Chris Young's done a nice job. Look at that. Just 64 pitches in the sixth inning, Fizz. That's, that's excellent pitch efficiency. And he's really chewed up Escobar first two times up, struck him out looking 
and then got him swinging at a great slider. The only taxing inning was the 17th, and it that was a one-two-three frame. I'm talking about pitches more than 15. Most starters will tell you would like to be right around 12 to 15 per inning. He's falling behind Escobar three and one. And then came right after him and he belts it to center field and that ball is gone and the Angels have their first lead of the night. Three and one right down the middle. It's the home run ball that really hurts Chris Young. And you can tell on contact that ball was squared up. Three and one, he's looking for that pitch. Escobar's third home run this year. When this series had started, they had hit just 13 home runs in their first 19 games. But then on Monday, they belted three. Last night, Johnny Giovatella had a big home run and two home runs tonight. Royals fans, if you can't watch the games on TV, you can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app, log in, and stream the Royals wherever you go. Three and one. You know, it's not Chris Young, really. It's the offense. They need to pick him up. 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. Yeah. And he's, he's keeping him in the game. That's just the third hit. And he's given up. Two happen to be homers. Luke Cochaber starting to warm in the Kansas City bullpen. Slider fouled off. And it doesn't look like Chris is tiring, Hud. It was just the fact that he was falling behind, and then the hitter. He's sitting dead red, and Escobar got a fastball right down the middle. This kid's been a tough out in the series with four hits and ten at bats, playing solid defense. He's 24 years old out of Venezuela. He will walk in front of Mike Trout. Dave Island coming out for a visit. Also giving Hochaber time to warm in that Kansas City pen. A home run, now a walk. And then the big hitters, Trout, Kuholtz, and Calhoun. That's sprint question. Besides Mike Trout, who is the only other player in the history of the game? To win the Silver Slugger Award in his first four seasons, Willie Mays, Rod Carew. Well, you're just going to guess over and over. You got to pick one. Well, I went with Pujols. Throw some names out there. Maybe one of them will stick. Mike Piazza, ah. 93 to 2002. Mm. He started just up the freeway with the Los Angeles Dodgers, then wound up with the New York Mets. Trout checks his swing on a slider low and away ball one. How you pitch the other guys is so important because Trout and Pujols will put up their numbers last year. Trout with 41 home runs and Pujols with 40 and Mike Sosha said. Trout and Pujols just need to play their game to their potential and we'll get going. And they have in this series. And 
that one is struck well. Gordon will back. He'll make the catch. Trout got that one off the end of the bat. And it just did not have the same jump that the one in the fourth inning had. Oh, he, he just hit the top half of the ball, had top spin on it. He gets under that. That's another one. That's right, his wheelhouse, right down in the middle. Game of inches. And Ned Yost will go to the bullpen and bring in Luke Hochaber. Young right now at 77 pitches, going five and a third innings, but leaves giving up three runs. By one, our University of Kansas Hospital injury report takes a look at Charlie Morton of the Philadelphia Phillies, placed on the disabled list with a torn left hamstring, will miss the rest of the year. And he had a pretty good start with the Phillies this year. And Philadelphia currently in third place in the National League East. They started the day with a record of 10 and 10. They'll miss Charlie. Luke Hochaber is our Chevy call to the bullpen. Pitching in his 10th game this year, an excellent 2-3-5 ERA, just one walk, 10 strikeouts. Facing one of baseball's best offensive players, Albert Pujols. 0 for 2 today, but belted two home runs in the opener and 565 in his great career. That's 13th most in baseball history. O'Chaver. Got great numbers. We just showed them to you. He's got that good overhand curveball, nice cut fastball. He'll go low to 94, low 90s. Strike one. Should be good and rested. His last outing was against Baltimore, April 22nd. Gordon will take care of Pujols, so both Trout and Pujols fly out to Alex in left field. Two out now in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Cole Calhoun. For the top of the 
order has really hurt the Royals in this series. Escobar on base four times yesterday, on base once in the opening six to one victory. Ortega with a couple of hits, a run scored in the opening win, and on base a couple of times with a ground out. And last night's nine to four win. The bottom of that angel order was good. Very good. Yep. And Salvador Perez will be unable to throw out Ortega. Escobar, I think, uh, told Ned Yost to check on that because he thought he got the tag down. That looked as like the runner was coming in. Looked like from here he got him. What was the pitch? How about a strike? Unless he got his right hand on the bag. Let's see. See his left hand. He, it buckled under him, and he hadn't gotten to the base yet. Ooh. So the Royals will challenge us. Ned Yo says, "Take a look at it back in New York City." Ortega is hoping he is not 0 for 2 trying to advance on Salvador Perez. He was thrown out earlier in this series. Ruled safe on this one. But there was a little separation in body and bag and looked like Escobar was able to get that glove in there. See how his left hand got stuck underneath and, and Escobar's got that glove on there and then he gets his left hand on it. I mean fans you remember last year Terrence Gore going in and his foot coming off the bag by just a, a millimeter of an inch and they ruled him out and the same thing was true on Gerard Dyson once last year and both of those guys going hard. Yeah, it's a nice job by Escobar to continue to put the tag and hold the tag on him. Uh, his see his his left hand is off the base. The Royals third challenge of the year they are one and one this season. Crew chief is Mike Everett. It's not first base you, you know it's not if you touch the base and, and first before the tag I mean you got to stay on that bag. Yep. Who knows it, you, no longer can you say well it looked like no because you just don't know it's got to be clear and convincing but well this is taking a while for New York to figure out. They are still on the phone with New York City as they're evaluating the play at second base. Did Perez throw out Ortega? Home plate umpire Tim Timmons visiting with the Royal Salvador. Royals at one time had a 2 0 lead, but Trout went deep, and Escobar gave them the lead here in the sixth. They must be taking a look at angles we don't have. Well, let's just get it right. That's all that matters. They're back in New York City getting the protractor and the compass out, trying to get the microscope to take a look at the videotape. Right. See if there's just that little bit of separation as Escobar stuck his glove in there. We got a drum roll, please. Out! 
So Salvador Perez has twice thrown out Ortega but you Escobar goes deep to give the Angels a three to two lead. Great tag. That away. in this ball game but our cricket wireless something to smile about is Salvador Perez over 50 percent now and throwing out would be base dealers he's the best in the American League defensively hands down see that throw anywhere down there near that bag that's perfect look at he had a lot on it too now that that hand right just didn't stay on the base or take it cost himself a bag right there now sometimes that sliding guard on his left hand that got jammed there that that'll slow you down sometimes you know it'll, it'll make you tuck that arm and it's a good thing there because they that's how they got it. Yeah Escobar immediately motioned to Ned Yost that I think we should challenge because he came off the bag and he was indeed right. The Royals will go hitters two three and four against a lefty pitcher in Jose Alvarez. And Jose throws strike one. He pitched in 64 games for the Angels last year and went four and three with a 3-4-9 ERA. He throws a cut fastball. He'll go 87 and 92. Big curveball. Giving up one home run. Rather high ERA early. Strike two. Moose is two for three with a pair of singles and a run scored on Hosmer's home run. Moose might get the big curveball here. Well, he chops it to third. Escobar is there. And guns him down. It's been a hot night for the guy coming up, Eric Hosmer. He is a triple shy of the cycle. Home run in the first. Double in the third. And a single is last time up. Now back to live action, and he pulls it to the right side foul. Don't see many triples in this ballpark. Best chance, right field line. The great and powerful Haas. That's right. She's got it right. He can pull a double by Albert on that first base bag. He might have a chance for a triple. And then he tries to bunt his way on, but it will stay foul. And now he's down in the count 0 2. Not a bad eye trying to get on with Escobar pulled way over towards the shortstop position. Well, 
as hot as he is, you hate to see him try to do that, but you know, hey, it went foul. So when you bunt, you know, you try to get a fair foul, that way you get another chance. The Royals have back to back lefties in Mustakas Hosmer, and then the switch hitting Morales waiting on deck, followed by a right hander Perez. On his hands. And there is a right hander warming up in the Angels bullpen, I would imagine. Perhaps for Perez, but the Royals do have a little protection with Alex Gordon, a left hander, behind Salvador. First things first. One ball, two strikes. Alvarez with two big plays in this seventh inning, getting Moose on a ground out and striking out Eric Hosmer, who was three for three before that pitch. Sneaky fastball by Alvarez. Now a former Angel in Kendris Morales played on the big league level with the Halos from. 2006 until 2012. We saw some great moments here. 2009 season was fabulous when he finished fifth in the American League MVP, over 30 home runs and over 100 RBIs. Strike in the outside corner. He's he's trusting his fastball here coming in and to the righties he'll use his changeup. The 2009 season I was talking about Rex. He hit 306, belted 34 home runs. Knocked in 108 runs and was tearing the cover off the ball early in 2010 before he broke that ankle at home plate. Two and two. Missed all of 2011. I mean, that, that was career threatening. He had to work hard to get back. Hit a grand slam to walk off a victory over the Seattle Mariners, celebrating at the plate, broke his ankle. But then battled back well, and they had to re break the leg in 2011 to reset it. And then in 2012, still not 100%, but still hit 22 home runs that year and knocked in 73, and then they let him go to Seattle where he hit 23 home runs and knocked in 80 and then of course had that down year with the split season with Minnesota and Seattle and then a terrific 2015 with the Royals three and two. Appeal it did not go, so it's a walk, a two out walk to Kendris Morales. First walk issued by Jose Alvarez. And you know, Royals fans, it's time for you to vote for your All Stars. You can vote up to 35 times for your Royals online, including a maximum of five ballots cast in any 24 hour period. Vote at Royals.com 
on your computer tablet and smartphone be a part of Major League Baseball history and help select the starting lineups for the 2016 all star rosters vote today vote tomorrow vote at Royals .com. and you can also catch all of the excitement of the 87th Major League Baseball all star game July 12th live on Fox. Salvi fouls off the first pitch strike one. Let's see if he can get a hold of one, get an extra base hit here. He lined out his last time up with a couple of guys on, so he squared it up. But right at Ortega. He lined out his first at bat too, so he's he's close. The breaking ball, 0-2. And then he chases a bad ball in the dirt and strikes out. So a fine job by Jose Alvarez as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning with the Angels leading the Royals three to two. Royals two and just like we promised earlier in the game it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Oh that was a beautiful swing right there. Everybody in the house knew it too. Bouncing off that rock pile two nothing with the fourth inning. Mike Trout even it up. Runner on base he hit one to dead center. All tied. And then in the sixth inning Escobar got a three run cookie right down the middle and he took it out center field. After we're standing, Royals looking for a comeback. Hoach Hafer got some help from Salvador Perez in that sixth inning to get the final two outs. Hoach got one himself, and then Salvi threw out Ortega. There was that three and a half minute debate. New York City said Salvador threw him out. And great tag by Escobar, and now Cal Cole Calhoun will lead things off against Hoach Haber with a clean inning. Debate. Yes, I, I didn't see any, any of those umpires down there saying one word. They, they just are all ears, Biz. That's because they're master thespians, <laughs> they're and they were acting the part, yeah. trying to it, maintain their seriousness. It went the Royals' way. Calhoun has walked and flied out to center field. To go with Simmons and Pennington to follow.
Well, that hook was so big that Salvi had a tough time catching it. Ho Chavers cutter, that's his premium pitch. And he's got really good command with it. Throws it on two and one, but misses three balls and one strike. Angels have had their leadoff man on twice, and both times he scored one on a single by Ortega, followed by the home run by Trout, and the other the leadoff home run by Escobar in the sixth. It was a foul off the front foot. Man, that hurt. You better believe it did. Oh, the shin. Well, guys, let's take a Northtown Mazda game break while we wait for Cole Calhoun. And how about the move made today by Brad Osmus? He moves Justin Upton out of the two hole, puts in JD Martinez, Martinez homers. And then the other Martinez, Victor Martinez, goes deep. So JD off of Sonny Gray. And then it is Victor off of former Royal Liam Hendricks. And the Tigers put up a nine spot in their win today. And they're back to 500 at 10 and 10. They started the day five back of the White Sox, who have been on fire now 16 and 6. Another great start, this time by Quintana. Quintana, part of a 4 nothing shutout, the White Sox over the Blue Jays. Yeah, they're playing some good ball. Man, are they? Long way to go. That ball is well struck left center field. But Alex Gordon with the great jump gets there just in front of the insurance sign. Man, does he provide insurance for a pitcher? Sure does. That ball was, was hit well, but Alex was tracking it. He didn't even take a peek down to see where he was because he, he's not afraid of any wall in the league. Good focus. Oates said thank you. Hud, he looked where the wall was, probably about 10 strides away. There is a ball again belted yeah, to left field, back. and it's gone. Andrelton Simmons with his first home run of the year. It's four to two, Angels. All angel runs tonight provided by home runs. They had only 13 home runs in their first 19 games. They have seven in three games against the Royals. Well, typically, Hoche was putting that cutter on the outer half, and he gave that cutter right over the middle of the plate. Pennington goes after the first pitch. Well, there the Angels three home runs only one was really a pitch that was up and out of the zone Chris Young throwing at the pool holes, but he didn't miss it. The other ones were all right down the middle. The Royals will go with Gordon and Fonte and Orlando and they're batting in the top of the eighth inning. Man, that's a great breaking ball he throws to Cliff Pennington for the strikeout. 
which is first and the second out of the bottom of the seventh. Kansas City has lost four straight road games for the first time since July of 2014. Quite frankly, as you were talking about, HUD, it's been more a lack of offense than a lack of pitching. A 211 batting average in that time, the previous games, and 0 for 7 in this one with runners in scoring position. Well, it's been the Royal Starters, it's been so good, and, you know, but you just you're not going to have that A game every time out, so you know your offense is, when it hasn't been really pr producing all year like it can, it's, that catches up to you. Pulls it to Moose. That's the final out of the seventh inning, but Simmons goes deep, and the Angel lead is now four to two. Run home run by Trout tied it, and then two more home runs, one by Escobar, one by Simmons, have given the Angels a four to two lead. Alex Gordon will lead things off, and the lefty Alvarez will stay in the game. It'll be Gordo first, and then a pair of right handers in Infante and Orlando. Herrera is warming in the Kansas City bullpen after. Hochaver worked an inning and two thirds, did give up a home run to Simmons on the first pitch cutter that he threw him. And there is Herrera getting ready. Royals will have tomorrow off, so they'll have a day to rest in Seattle before they take on the Mariners. And that won't be easy because they'll face two of their best pitchers in that series. Felix Hernandez with an ERA under two, and Ty Walker with an ERA under two. Yep, Seattle, they took care of Keichel last night. They're down a couple runs in the seventh against Houston tonight. Top foul back and out of play. One ball, two strikes. For the Royals, it will be Medlin against King Felix on Friday. Saturday, Ventura against Wade Miley. To the right side, fielded by Pennington. Gordo is out number one. 
And we will be facing a hot hitter in a Northtown Mazda game break. Robinson Cano has been on fire lately. Yep. No such thing as easy games anywhere. They've been very good on the road, not so good at home, three and five at home. But picking things up in Seattle right now in first place with a record of 11 and nine starting the day. That's to the opposite field. Calhoun drifts under it and makes the catch, and Ponte is out number two. Paulo has been on base all three times reached on a fielder's choice and stole a base in the second and then two singles each to right field. Actually the bottom of the order has done their job Infante on twice Orlando on three times Dyson on three times. Good inside out swing work. He's had two of those base hits to right. There's a strike two and one. Said, got that right field stroke going and tried to take a shot at right field. They're shading that in that way in the outfield, pretty much straight up on the infield. He's got pull power. Well, he does see ever. It seems like all of his home runs are to left field. Yeah, but you know he's and way back getting, shots. Getting a chance to play, you know, not every day. So he his swing is perfect right now. Speed strikes out Paulo Orlando, so the Royals go in order in the eighth inning. We head to the bottom of the eighth at the Big A, four to two Angels.
Royals baseball is brought to you by Ram. Right now, get a great deal during the Ram Truck Month. And by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joe Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery with you. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the Angels have roared back from two runs down to take a 4-2 lead. And Kelvin Herrera will try and keep it right there. He is not allowed an earned run this year. Two walks, 14 strikeouts in 10 and a third. And he could close for just about any team in baseball. Sure enough, opponents only hit a buck 84. Gets it done with three exceptional pitches. Fastball, 98. Change up anywhere from 88 to 90. And a slider at 81. He will start things with Jin Man Choi, left handed batting designated hitter. Picked up his first major league hit last Saturday. He is 0 for 2 tonight. A strikeout and a pop up, and now 1 for 11 this season. A little late on that swing. 97 miles an hour. Yep. A little tardy. So they stay with the fastball and he raises the eye level and also the velocity to 99 miles an hour. No chance. 97, 99, and then he, he changes speeds a little bit, drops off to 98. Yeah. Don't do him a favor and, and slow or speed his bat up with a slider or a changeup. Just might as well just finish him off with a fastball away. Same pitch. Inside corner he goes at 99 miles an hour. Salby wanted it away. It came back inside, and Choi just takes it for a called strike three. Fans don't miss out on the first of five special bobbleheads of the 2016 season on Saturday, May 14th versus the Braves. The first 20,000 fans to come through the gates will receive a Ned Yost bobblehead. All of the bobbleheads commemorate the 2015 World Series championship run and showcase special moments from the postseason. Make sure to collect all five. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. Herrera. Fans love those bobbleheads. They're great. Herrera just pumped that in there at 99. Escobar then hits a ground ball to Mike Moustakis. Two out. So here comes the pest. Rafael Ortega. He is lined out, singled, and scored in front of the Trout home run, and then also walked. So he has been on base. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in this series. It was only a matter of time before the Angels did pick things up. I mean, they were dreadful the first three weeks of the season offensively before this season hitting the series, excuse me, hitting 217. Well, Kiz, if your designated hitter is batting ninth, mm -hmm. you have some offensive Ooh. problems. So the I'll tell you the guy they need to get going is Crone. Yep. But he's been so streaky. For the Royals, they need to get well, just about everybody going. Eric Hosmer, three for 
four in this game and extended his hitting streak to 17 straight. Mike Mustakis, two for four. He did his job. And the bottom of the order was getting on base all night long. The Royals not hitting in the clutch. Joe Smith getting ready. I figured we would see Houston Street in that ninth inning. Pulled through the hole right side and Ortega is on for the eighth time in this series. Fan Sunday NASCAR Sprint Cup racing heads to the big one at Talladega with the Geico 500 where Dale Earnhardt Jr. will look to defend his title from last year beginning at 1130 on your local Fox station or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Here is Mike Trout. One for three tonight and that was a booming home run to dead center field about 430 feet. He went over the hedges in dead center field onto the batter's eye. Yep, we'll see if he can catch up to one of those outstanding fastballs. Explosive. Not many hitters can catch that fastball at that velocity right above the belt. And then he throws the slider that is taken. Now, now at 88, he can get to that. Came back with the breaking ball. He was lucky to get it in enough on Trout. The best he could do was foul it off. Stayed inside, but I'm not going to throw him any more slides. No. Well, stay with that fastball and strike him out here. He went fastball and then two breakers. Salvi's getting him to shake his head. And that, that confuses the hitter. And then he gets him with a wicked slider low and away that Trout swings over the top. So Herrera with a shutout eighth and the Royals will take their chance at rallying in the ninth. Dyson Escobar Moose. The Angels with a four to two lead over the Royals and all all four Angel runs came by way of the home run Trout tied it Escobar gave him the lead Simmons with the insurance and the Angels looking for their first home sweep versus the Royals since 2010 the Royals had won 
10 of the previous 11 games coming into the series, including that three game ALDS sweep at the end of 2014. They caught the Angels at a hot time. And Houston Street is not closing. It's going to be Joe Smith. And we were just talking with Mark Gubazov, who's the television broadcaster for the Angels right next to us. And Gooby said he has no idea why Street is not in there. And they're going with Joe Smith instead. Well, Street is not even in the bullpen. So there's a there's a health issue or something. Well, they'll start things with Dyson, who's been on three times, then go back to Escobar, and then Mike Mustakas. Gerard Dyson with good numbers against Joe Smith, four for seven with a double. Yeah, Smith is a side armor. He, he's going to go 88 to 92. He's got a sweeping slider from from the side, makes it tough on righties, and he, he's got a changeup he'll use as well. He is a veteran out of Cincinnati. Ball one. Time to get on, get something going here. There's a strike on the inside corner. Dyson walked in the second, singled in the fourth, reached on a fielder's choice in the sixth, and stole a base. Well, you can't hit it much harder than that. It's a one hop, four three, and Dyson is the first out of the ninth inning. Right on him. Escobar has had all kinds of difficulty against Joe Smith in the past. Just one hit in 15 times to the plate. Well, he's tough on righties with that drop down sidearm action. Sweeps that slider away from righties, and Esky's been. Swinging at those sliders outside all night. Smith looking for his first save of the year. Street had five coming in. Strike one. Oh man, that's tough right there. He he sunk that in the outside corner. And then Escobar stretching his strike zone like we've seen him do often in this series. He struck out on pitches that were not strikes in the first and the fifth. Thrown by Tropiano. I told you streets not even in there. I know. See Wade Davis beginning to warm up just in case. There's a line drive base hit, and the Royals will bring the tying run to the plate. Oh, yeah. Smith kept working him away, working him away. Escobar took that shot to right field. Eski wants the ball for some reason now. Come on. He was asking for the ball. Now I don't know. Some hitters, after a slump, you know, they, they just kind of jokingly ask for the ball. But Esky, yeah, he had a serious look on his face. Yeah. Well, that ended in 0 for 17 slide that he'd been in. Well, here we go. Mike Mustakas, two for four, and he's had some very good games in this ballpark. Pulls it to the right side. That's trouble. A four, a six, and a three game ending double play. Ouch. 